And thank you, Dr. Dobson, and thank you, uh, the Cultural Center, for having me here. And thanks to all of you who came out to see me. I appreciate you being here. Um, he covered a lot <laughs> in that uh, introduction. Um, so I'm going to go over uh, it a little bit more, and then I'm going to talk to you about why I create. Uh, <clears throat> let's start my slideshow. I grew up around hardworking people. And I, I came to America and saw that uh, celebrities uh, were the ones that they get all of the love, or they get all the shine, like they say. And the regular person, they're not appreciated, you know. And I, I mean, I, I saw young and old who struggled to just get their meal, particularly my grandmother, who would walk miles and miles, who would go and, and, and pick wood, you know, get wood so that she could make the fire, so she, she could boil the water, so that she could you know, cook our dinner, you know, for us even growing up, having to go tie out the goats and pick them up after school, we, all we knew was hard work. And those people I felt were underappreciated and their voice was never, uh, was never heard. And uh, I thought, well, oh, I just, I want to paint them and I, and I want them to be seen and I want them to be heard and, and, I, and I'm going to do this. You know, I was excited, but you know, at the time I didn't have the skill level to really, to really um, you know, express what I was trying to express through the work because I am self-taught. I am you know, uh, an intuit, as they might call me. You know? And at the time, I didn't have the skill level, but I still, I still attempted to do so with the work. And that's what my early work was about. It was about the everyday folk, um, you know, the hard-working people, the Jamaican people. Um, always worked in acrylic at the time is that's the only medium I knew how to work with. And as I was painting these people, I noticed that, the, you know, people didn't really uh, appreciate the work. I don't think they felt like they could relate to the pieces. Um, I'm a Caribbean artist in America. I, I didn't find that people were related to it and they didn't want to see it. And I don't know if it was the way that I painted or if it was the subject matter. Everybody looked sad. And, um, you know, it, it, it was disheartening for me. Uh, but I, I still continue to paint, paint them regardless because I felt like they needed to be seen. Um, and for a long time, that's what I did while trying to find myself as a creative. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is actually, um, these are actually my cousins. This piece is here at Vanderbilt as well. Um, I was dealing also, trying to attempt to deal with social issues. So this is a, a young girl dealing with teenage pregnancy. Um, but as an artist, you really, really sometimes, uh, when you're trying to find your voice, you really struggle sometimes. And it's, it's very, very, very challenging. And, very, and especially when you're surrounded by what you deem to be really great artists. So I. I I struggled for a long time to find uh, that voice um, and to, to find, uh, to, to, to master my skill. I ended up um, finding a couple mentors that, that saw that I had talent and believed in me enough to, uh, to, to give me a chance. One was Charlie Palmer. Um, I don't know if you all are familiar with Charlie Palmer. He's an African-American artist, wonderful artist. And he said to me, you have talent. You have skill, you just need to nurture it, and you have to take your time. Because I didn't, I wasn't formally trained, so there were things I didn't know. So he took his time and taught me, uh, and taught me how to use color, and taught me to pay attention to the work, and, and um, my work started to change a little bit. Um, and I could see myself growing. And others would tell me I was growing. This is the hot and tot Venus. I don't know if uh, you're familiar with her, her, with her story, Sarge Bartman. And again, during this time, I was still trying to paint the everyday person, but even trying to make political statements as well with the work. So it, I was going through a lot, you know, as a growing artist. But I could see that I was progressing and progressively getting better as a creative. Um, this is here at Vanderbilt as well. <laughs> as well. Um, and then I met my other mentor. Now, my other mentor uh, was Kevin. Whack Williams. You might, he took time out of his busy schedule as well uh, to teach me how to draw again. So 
so that I could become a better artist. And um, his lessons really, really began to improve, um, improve my work a lot. So um, again, these are all what I consider to be transitional pieces. Then, as I continued to grow as an artist, I decided that I, I really, I want to go back to talking about the everyday person, but I, 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 I want to find a way to, to get other people interested and happy about them as well. So I decided I wanted to incorporate um, quilting into my work because I knew the long history and tradition of, of, of quilting in, in African American culture and in Caribbean culture and all of it. And I said, let me incorporate quilting in my work and maybe I can start painting more of my family members uh, because you know these are the real people, the real experience. So I started to do uh, quilting pieces. This is my grandmother pay, playing with our dog Bringle in Jamaica. And I thought I would try to tell stories with, with the art, uh, with the quilts. And these are not literal quilts, but obviously they're, they're, uh, they're paper. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna tell stories. And I, and I was very excited about these pieces. But, um, and, I, and I did quite a few of them. This little girl represents myself as a child. Uh, I did quite a few of these, uh, of these pieces. This is actually my mother. Uh, it's called Mother Loved Flowers. Um, but again, I, I felt something was missing uh, with the work. And I, I started to fall into an artistic depression <laughs> because uh, I don't like to remain stagnant. I like to work, work, work. I like to grow. I like to change. I like to get better. And I still felt like I wasn't, I wasn't there yet. And um, I don't feel like I'm there yet either, but I wasn't really expressing what I wanted to with the work. And um, so I, I fell into an artistic depression, a creative depression. And um, I, I stopped painting for a while. And I was, uh, I don't know, many people around me probably don't know, I stopped painting. For me, stopping, not painting for about six months is an eternity because I paint every day. So I stopped painting. And I, and I really was asking God, what, what's next? Because maybe this isn't for me. Maybe you saved my life and I was supposed to do something else with my work and with my life. Maybe art is not what I'm supposed to do. I enjoy writing, maybe I need to write. You know, maybe something else. But, uh, you know, I questioned it a lot. Um, then one day, I was driving down the street. And this happens often. <laughs> well, you know, driving down the street, but this happens often where uh, things just come to me. And I said, I'm trying to paint these everyday people, but they're still being treated the same way. Nobody still, people still walk past them, nobody looks at them, nobody talks to them, or not talk to them, but nobody pays attention to them, nobody gives them the respect, even through the paintings. I, 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 I want them to be seen for who they are you know, intrinsically, who the, the beauty in them, you know, the, these real people. I want them to be seen. But I thought now, maybe I need to do it in another way, uh, more conceptual. So I, I said, what if I turn them into kings and queens? <laughs> Such a simple term, kings and queens, you know. What if I, I heighten them by by you know, dressing them in the quilt and clothing and making them look like royalty. And, and, and I bet you people will stop then. I bet you they'd pay attention to them then and wonder, wow, why is this person so regal? And that's what I did. I, I, I said, aha, it was an aha moment for me. And I went home excited and I, I did my first piece. And I, I was very, 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 very excited at that point. I said, oh. I think I, I figured something out. And I started to, to take what I thought were the, the everyday person, and not necessarily the real image of them, but my idea of them. And, and um, I, I, thought, I thought I'd flip it inside out, you know. And I flipped it inside out and started to create uh, these images of the kings and queens using the quilted fabric this time. And I heightened them by using gold leaf. And I decided I would incorporate birds into the pieces 
because I hadn't dealt with a lot of my personal, my own personal issues in my work. And the birds, for me, were, were a way of sort of dealing with and, and saying now, I'm free from illness. I'm free from the dialysis machine. I'm free to be who I am as a, as a creative. And, and birds represent that. They represent spirituality and they represent freedom. And so I thought, let me incorporate a little piece of myself. I mean, this is all me, but a little piece of my personal experience through the birds in the pieces. And that's what I started to do. Uh, I started to realize I was painting a lot of women. And I, I didn't know why. I have no problems with guys. But, you know, I was like, I'm painting so many women. There were men around, like my Uncle Carl, who, who, the Rastafarian, who taught me how to sharpen my pencil with a machete. You know, <laughs> seriously, you know, he was a man's man, you know. Uh, but I knew a man's man, and I knew all of these strong women, you know, who did things that were unimaginable. And, and I said, well, maybe that's why I'm painting all of these women. And then, you know, I realized that I painted them with really full features, you know, wide noses and full lips and dark skin. And, you know, I, had, I, I wasn't doing it purposely because a lot of my family, believe it or not, is very fair-skinned. You know, we've done our family history. Most African-Americans and most Caribbean people are, are mixed. Our family history, we have a lot of Scottish and Irish. And you can see it through my mother. But I, I started painting these very African... Uh, African, strong African features. And a lot of people said to me, you're injecting yourself even more into your paintings than you're aware. Because I would go to exhibitions and they'd say, you look like all of your paintings. Every single one of them. And I, I wasn't trying to, I'm, I don't try to do that, but I suppose as an artist, that's the kind of, you know, that happens, you know. Uh, and so I continued on with these, um, with these, uh, these, these images. And so essentially the, the exhibition here today, the title, Illuminations, Crowned, Cloaked, and Cultivated. I think that what happened for me is that a lot of people appreciated, began to appreciate this style of work. And I think that they lost track of, well, I felt like they were losing track of kind of why I was creating it. I think that it became just beautiful work, you know. It became, it became just pretty, you know. And oh, they're so pretty. But for me, there was more behind it. And I and I thought that the title of the exhibition sort of encompassed what I was trying to express in the work. You know, I'm trying to illuminate these individuals. You know what I mean? And I'm and and I by 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 that I mean I'm crowning and cloaking and cultivating them in a way that you can pay attention to who they are. Uh, you pay attention to who they are, uh, and and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that works. <laughs> I don't know if it does. Um, one of my favorite quotes uh, is by Frederick Douglass, and uh, the quote is, "The soul that is within, no man can degrade." And I love it because. The beauty of an individual is not just physical, but all we see is the physical. And we don't allow ourselves to see them from the inside out. We don't allow that. We judge people instantaneously. And that's what people were doing with my in, in initial images, because I was painting them literally. We judge them instantaneously because of their clothing, because of their hair, because they don't have money, because they're dirty, because of all of that. But you don't know how much this person has to offer at all because you don't give them a chance. And somehow, you know, I'm playing on that with the, with the art by creating these massively beautiful images and the gold and the sparkles and all that. So somehow you can stop for a moment and ask me a question. You know, what is this about? Because it, 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 it is about internal beauty. Uh, I should say some of my inspirations uh, did come from Gustav Klimt. If you're familiar with fine art, he was an amazing artist. And he, you, you know, a lot of his, his art was probably a little more sexual. Um, mine is not. But I, I, I got the idea and the gold and, and, the, and that from his work. 
I don't copy, but I'm inspired, you know, by his work. Um, and you probably can see pieces of inspiration in these pieces if you know his work. Uh, this is a piece from uh, my last exhibition. This is a piece of myself as a child. I rarely paint myself. And so um, that's actually my passport picture, the one you saw earlier. And I was sort of juxtaposing that with the donkey. And we used to ride donkeys, you know, in Jamaica. And, you know, the, the real experience and the heightened experience. And that's what I was trying to do with, um, with that uh, piece. I even heightened the donkey. I gave him a halo. Um, and um, that's a, a detail of the piece. And, um, I do paint men from time to time. <laughs> if I can find one that I <laughs> I'm interested in painting. So. Um, and uh, that piece. This is called Paradise. Um, I, I paint a lot of portraits where you're, you're looking directly at the, the viewer, where they're looking at you. I, I was told not to do that a long time ago. Don't, don't. People don't want to look at the patents. People looking at them, it makes them feel weird. You know, but I want you to look at them because I want you to look into them. That's the whole point. It's, it's about what's within. I want you to, I want them looking at you to make you feel something. I want you to feel awkward. If it's, if it's going to be awkward, feel awkward, whatever it is. But that's why I paint them staring directly at you, because you can't look away. You have to look, look at him. He's looking at you. So most of my paintings are like that. This piece out there is called The Light Within as well. Uh, this is a pastel piece. I work with pastel to one of my first loves, uh, one of the first mediums I, I work with. And, um, and that's another piece out there. This is called The Conqueror. So anyhow, um, that's all. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask me. <laughs> Thank you. I will take any questions. <laughs> I don't because none have approached me. Unfortunately, what I've found with um, some of the younger artists, instead of approaching me, they, uh, they copy my work or attempt to copy my work, which I think is, um, I, they say it's the greatest form of flattery. <laughs> I'm not flattered. <laughs> you know, but um, I, if they do approach me, I, I would. Of course, I would. I would love to do that. It would be an honor. Yes. Do you feel that you're at a good place right now, or do you feel that you're still evolving in terms of where you're going in, in your art style? I am always evolving. I, I am wherever there is, mm -hmm. I don't plan to ever get there because I'm always trying to get there. I like the idea of trying to get there than being there. You know what I mean? It keeps me motivated to keep working hard. So, no, I, <laughs> I'm not there. I'm always evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, technique you use on your paintings. Mm -hmm. um, what, what really inspired you to use that technique? This, on this particular painting? The cloth. Oh, it, it, was quil it was a quilted. So you, you have a history of quilting? Do you know how to quilt? I do not know how they to quilt. <laughs> but family members quilt, and they make blankets and so forth. Yes. So, so, so there's other memories with that. With the like, quilt? Like, like my grandmother and, and, and the lady with the quilt. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there, would be, there would be five or six ladies there, and one of them would be cooking, and I would, there would be certain scents in the house. Mm -hmm. And when I saw your painting, that large painting up there, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, all, all of the memories came back. Right. And I could relate to it. It's wonderful. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You were going to? Um, Well, when I painted Sarah Bar Bartman, well, it's Charlie Palmer has that painting. <laughs> but when I painted her, I, I did an a exhibition called Convergence from Africa to the Americas, where I was 
sort of merging the, um, the experience of African American women, or, or excuse me, black women all over the world from past to present together in one space. And I painted her because uh, I felt like, uh, you know, she was one of those women that her life was, was uh, tortured, you know, and, I, and I, I didn't think a lot of people really knew uh, enough about her story. And I wanted to tell her story in a sort of a respectful manner. Uh, right after I did that show, there was another show uh, that dealt with her, surprisingly, at the same place. And I, and I felt that, I felt personally that that show exploited her because um, they, it, unfortunately, the artists were men. And I'm not saying that men aren't great artists, but they focused on her behind. And it became an exploitation, the exact same thing that they did to her when you know she was alive. Uh, but yeah, I was try I was attempting to 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 tell her story through that. Yes. Um, a lot of your artwork incorporates birth of the Yes. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? Like, how did you get that idea? Like, yes. As I mentioned earlier, each bird um, is is a symbol of my freedom from illness. It's a personal. Uh, it's a personal, I, I put it in there because I, you know, I want to remember, never forget that I, I, I was almost dead, you know what I mean? Uh, so, it's my freedom to create, so. Any more questions? Yes? The, uh, I have to take these off, it sounds weird here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things I was, I enjoy and I love about the fact is that you paint with darker skin tones. Mm -hmm. And as a light skinned brother myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can appreciate that. But yeah. it, it, I was wondering if there was any. Um, I have two sisters who have dark, dark skin like myself. And one of them recently posted on Facebook about how she hates getting a comment, You're pretty to be so dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a common thing we hear in the African American community a lot. And I was wondering if that was any element of you having dealt with that as a child that's reflected mm -hmm. in why you also paint with darker skin tone. Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> you know, when, when I was little, very little, my complexion was even darker because I lived in, on the land and I was in the sun. And um, in Jamaica, they say you're black. Mm -hmm. And they say you're black and you're ugly because if you're black, you're dark. You know what I mean? And in, in, in unfortunately in Jamaica, like a lot of African American communities, they praise you if you have fair skin and they detest you if your skin is dark. And many of my family members are very fair skinned, including my mother. Very, very fair skinned. And I always felt like I was adopted because I was black. And it, it you know, it it was um, challenging. And then when I got here and saw how African Americans treated you for your because of your complexion, how you were treated. I thought, wow, this is absolutely horrible. It's hard for a little black girl to feel, to really feel beautiful. And then there was nothing in the media that said you are beautiful. You know, so yes, that definitely plays a role. And this particular little girl, this you can't tell she's a little girl, but she's my muse. I've painted her many, many, many times, and she's very, very dark. And when I first painted her, she was probably about eight. And she always heard in school, people always told her that she was ugly because she was dark. Her mother told me, you make her feel so proud when you paint her. You make her feel beautiful that she runs and shows people the paintings of her. Um, and I, I, I always paint her. I always go back to her. So in essence, I am also heightening these type of women as well. Yes. So. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> um, what are, if any, are some of the challenges that you're facing now as an artist and kind of like what direction do you feel like your artwork, you want it to go in now? Because I know you kind of talked about some of the um, you know, evolutions of your work um, uh, with the slideshow, but mm -hmm. is there anything that you're kind of excited about now or new ideas that you're kind of like mm -hmm. playing around with? Well, the challenges are first, that I am black, then I am woman, okay? In that order. <laughs> and I'm not just a woman, I'm a black woman. And there are limitations 
you want to say that it's limitless, but the truth is there are limitations because of those things. It's a man's world, first of all. The art world is, is controlled by men. Um, that's a fact. You know what I mean? Anybody tells you different, they're fibbing. It's not true. Um, you want to be taken seriously as a woman because if they see that you are attractive, they think you're trying to get by, okay? I don't want to get by with anything. I want to work and achieve my goals like anyone else. Um, it's challenging because a lot of galleries, because I paint big black faces, don't necessarily want big black faces, you know what I mean, in the gallery. Um, that's a big challenge. You know, they might say, wow, your work is, is, is beautiful, but we don't have the clientele that would really appreciate that, you know. You know if you painted, you know, more Caucasian images, I think that you probably could do really well, you know. I've heard that as well. It, it, it is, um, there's a lot of challenges, but I, I push past that because I, I'm not going to um, change myself or, you know, to appease anyone else. Um, as far as where I plan to go, I don't know where the future holds, but I, I, uh, I do have some uh, ideas in mind. Uh, some things that uh, deal with sort of getting the message out also more about my personal experiences with kidney failure and, um, and uh, issues in the black community with health and, and well-being. So, but I don't know. I, you know, I hope to, one day I'll be in, you know, the Brooklyn Museum or someplace like that. You know, I don't, I, I can't say where I'll be, but I'm definitely working towards that with the work. So, anything else? Yeah. The book that, that's mentioned in the bio mm -hmm. about is that out yet? Uh, yes, it was actually uh, uh, published uh, last year. Black Art in America is a is a premier website for African American and Afro Caribbean, uh, our Af African artists of the diaspora, uh, their their work. So they published it uh, last year, yes, on the site. So, yes. Anything else? No. Thank you. <laughs>